So anyway, my Twitter account is simply my first name, Matthias. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can also post them on Twitter, mention me, and I'll make sure to get back to you. Uh, then the second thing is, uh, I have a bit of a cold these days, so um, I apologize for any excessive coughing that may occur during this talk. Let's just make a deal, and whenever I start coughing like a madman, just pretend I'm like a beatboxer or something. So it's entertainment. So uh, JavaScript and Unicode, uh, I should probably first explain what Unicode is so that we're all on the same page before we continue over to JavaScript. So I'm only going to tell you the absolute minimum about Unicode, the absolute minimum that you need to know in order to work with JavaScript strings uh, correctly. So nothing more. It's easiest to think of Unicode as kind of like a database that maps um, each symbol, any symbol that you can think of, to a unique number called a code point and also to a unique canonical name for that symbol. So that way, uh, Unicode gives us an easy way to refer to symbols without actually having to use the symbol itself. We can just you know, refer to the code point or to the unique name, and then everyone will be able to look it up in the Unicode database and see which symbol it is we're talking about. Here are some examples. This is the Latin capital letter A, for example. Uh, as you can see, the code point is 0041. That's not the number 41, not the decimal number at least. It's a hexadecimal number. So that means if you convert it to a decimal number, it will be uh, 65 in this case. Um, but most often, uh, code points are notated in the hexadecimal format. As you can see in this example, formatted up to, uh, with zero padded up to four digits and prefixed with U+. That's just the way things are. Now, another example is the Latin small letter A, uh, which is, of course, a different character, so it has a different code point. I think you start to get the idea now. Um, there are many different symbols in Unicode, and simply each symbol gets its own Unicode code point. It's as simple as that. But there is some really, really weird stuff in Unicode. Uh, like, for example, there's a snowman symbol in Unicode. Why w I'm not sure why you would ever need a Unicode symbol in your documents, but it is there if you want to use it. I guess that's good news. And then there's also this guy, uh, the pile of poo symbol. I'm not, I didn't make this up, this is actually part of the Unicode standard. Uh, and its code point is, as you can see, 1F4A9. So you may have noticed that these are five hexadecimal digits, and we started with just two hexadecimal digits. So you may be wondering how far this whole code point thing can go and what the highest possible code point value is. Well, um, the possible code point values range from the first value is zero, and then the maximum value is 10 FFFF. So that's about a little over 1.1 million potential code points. Now, Unicode doesn't map symbols to all of these code points yet. A lot of them are simply reserved for use in the future. But still, that's a lot of potential symbols that we can use with Unicode. Now, luckily, there's a bit of categorization in Unicode. So they group some of these code points together so that it's easier to find uh, different areas of code points that we're talking about. So we have all these code points, these 1.1 million code points, and Unicode divides them up into 17 different planes. So each of these planes contains about 65,000 different code points. And the first plane is probably the most important one, so I'll have a special slide about that plane. It's called the Basic Multilingual Plane, or the BMP, and it contains all the most commonly used symbols. Whenever you're writing a document and it's in English, or it's even in French, I don't care, um, chances are you won't need any code points or any symbols outside of this range. Just this range will do in that case, and in most cases in general. So all the code points from 0 to FFFF are contained within this range. Just like any other range, those are 65,000 symbols. But of course, that leaves about 1 million other symbols that are spread across the different ranges, the other ranges, the other planes. Now, these planes are called the supplementary planes or the astral planes. And these are simply the code points and all the symbols that are not part of the BMP. So these live outside the BMP. And that's it. That's all you need to know about Unicode in order to understand the rest of this presentation, which will be about JavaScript. So now that we have a basic understanding of JavaScript, you'll, uh, of Unicode, you'll see that a lot of things in JavaScript are uh, more obvious now. Like, for example, hexadecimal escape sequences. You've probably seen this before. Uh, inside of a string, uh, 
sometimes you can have like a backslash followed by an X character and then followed by two hexadecimal digits. Well, now that you know what code points are, you know what these hexadecimal uh, digits refer to. Those are simply uh, code points that are being referred to. For example, backslash X41 refers to the code point U plus 0041, which stands for the Latin capital letter A <laughs> that we've seen a few slides back. So this way you can escape symbols uh, without having to use the actual symbol itself. And that can be useful in some ways. Um, this is another example with we use different code points here, different escape sequences, so we get a different string in result. Uh, kind of makes sense, but it's kind of useful, this kind of escape sequence, but because we're limited to just two hexadecimal digits, there are not a lot of different code points that we can uh, you know, that, that we can use this for. It only works for code points up to FF, of course, because we only have those two hexadecimal digits. Luckily for us, there is a different type of escape sequence that we can also use called the Unicode escape sequence. And you guessed it, it just allows for more hexadecimal digits. Instead of two, there are four. And instead of a backslash followed by an X, it's now followed by a U character. That's the only difference. So we could use the same example uh, from the last slide to escape the string ABC in all caps. But of course, now that we have these four hexadecimal digits, let's make use of that by escaping a character that has a code point that consists of four hexadecimal digits. For example, you could write this in JavaScript and the end result would be I love.js. So this is useful for all the code points in the range from zero to FFFF simply because you have four hexadecimal digits now. But what about all those over one million other code points? What about those astral code points? Or another way to phrase the question, what about the pile of poo? <laughs> well, uh, how can we escape astral symbols in JavaScript strings if we can only specify up to four hexadecimal digits for each escape sequence? Well, the answer is, it is possible, kind of, but it's a bit complicated. The unfortunate solution is to use this thing called surrogate pairs. And this is really a bit messy, uh, not just because there are pile, there's a pile of poo in the slides, it's just messy to work with. Um, as you can see, the code points for the pile of poo symbol, again, it is U plus 1F4A9. But if you want to write that as an escape sequence, you will actually need to use two separate escapes uh, with four hexadecimal digits each. And this is called a surrogate pair. Each escape se sequence that you see here represents the code point for a half of the surrogate. And these two surrogate halves combined together uh, form the actual single astral character outside of Unicode. So there are formulas to calculate the surrogates based on a given astral code point. And it's also possible, of course, to do the reverse or the opposite thing, to calculate the original astral code point when you're given just the two surrogate halves. And this is a JavaScript implementation of those formulas. Uh, you don't need to remember all this. But all you need to remember from this slide is that whenever you want to work with full Unicode and with astral Unicode symbols in JavaScript, there is some extra work that you should do. So anyway, um, the whole concept of having like a single escape sequence to represent BMP characters, the most commonly used characters, and then two separate escape sequences for those astral characters, that's a bit confusing and it has lots of annoying consequences as well throughout the entire JavaScript language. So let's say, for example, you have a string and you want to count the number of symbols in that string. Well, my first thought would be to use the length property of the string, right? Um, for example, if you have a string that contains the capital letter A, which is the code point 0041, <laughs> its length property would return the value one. And this kind of makes sense, because if you write it as an escape sequence, you can see that there's only one backslash u escape sequence there. There's one escape, so it is only a single character there. The same goes for the capital letter B, for example. Again, if you wrap it in a string and get its length property, you get a result of one. So in these examples, the length property of the string just happens to reflect the number of characters in the string. But this is not always the case. For example, let me just replace these characters with some different symbols, also from Unicode, of course. 
but with entirely different code points. They even look a bit similar to the other symbols that we've seen in the previous slide, but they're completely different symbols, and they have a completely different code point as well, as you can see here. So this is the mathematical bold capital letter A that you're seeing here. As you can see, its code point is 1D400, which are five hexadecimal digits, which means that it's actually an astral character. It doesn't live in the basic multilingual plane. And if you wrap this character into a string and get its length property, you will see that the result is two instead of one, even though there's only a single symbol there in the string. And this is a bit unexpected, maybe, and also a bit unfortunate. But then again, it kind of makes sense, because if you write it out as an escape sequence, uh, it turns out that under the hood, JavaScript automatically, automatically converts it into a surrogate pairs, and that's why it exposes the length as two instead of one. This is, of course, very confusing to us because, you know, we're human beings. We usually think in terms of Unicode symbols or characters, um, while JavaScript kind of exposes like surrogate halves separately, and it actually thinks in terms of code units, which is a concept that humans really shouldn't worry about or shouldn't care about. But thanks to JavaScript and this annoying behavior, we kind of have to sometimes. Similarly, if you get the length property of a string that contains the pile of poo character and nothing else, again, you would get the result of two instead of one. And that's, again, because it consists of two surrogate halves. Now, uh, this is problematic for a number of reasons and in a lot of real-world websites. For example, Twitter.com. Um, as you may know, tweets are limited to 140 characters per tweet. Um, and Twitter, in their backends, they're doing the right thing, and they don't really care about what kind of character you use. If you use a character from the BMP uh, plane in Unicode, it just counts as a single character. If you use a character from the astral plane, it doesn't matter. It still counts as only a single character. So that's all good and dandy. But because of a, a problem in their front end, uh, you'll get behavior that looks like this. As you can see, there's a counter there, and as you start typing characters, the counter decreases. And it seems to work fine up until now, but as soon as you start entering an astral symbol, like the pile of poo, for example, you'll see that it decreases in steps of two instead of one. So what they're doing here is they're simply getting the length property of the string rather than accounting for all these surrogate halves and surrogate pairs. So as you can see, for each pile of poo simple that you enter into a tweet on the Twitter website, it counts as two characters. And this is actually a bug, because if you use a different Twitter client um, that counts the characters correctly, you can actually post a tweet with 140 pile of poo symbols, if you would want to. <laughs> so uh, and this is a real world problem that's happening on a lot of sites. But so how can it be solved? What can we do about it? How can you accurately count the number of symbols in a JavaScript string? Well, like I said, you need to do some extra work. And uh, I, I would suggest using a JavaScript library for it. For example, you could use punicode.js, which has some utility methods for just that. Um, it can help you convert between JavaScript strings and Unicode code points. So for example, there's the UCS2 decode method. You can just pass in a string and then it will return an array uh, of code points. So there will be only a single array item for each code point. So whenever you just simply get the length of that resulting array rather than the length of the original string, you would get the result that you would expect. As you can see here, if you count the number of symbols in a string that only contains the capital letter A, you get one, same as the length property in this case. But if you do it on a different string with an astral character, you still get only the result of one, which is what you're expecting. So it's possible to work around it, but it's a bit of work. And of course, uh, this affects the entire JavaScript language. Whenever you're working with strings, uh, this is still a problem. So here are some other examples. Uh, for example, if you want to use string dot from character code, uh, you can pass in a code point value, so just a number, and then it will generate a string for you based on that code point. And it works fine in a lot of cases. Um, but as soon as you start using a code point outside of the BMP, so an astral code point, you will see that it, it still returns a result, but it's probably not the result that you would expect. So it only works as you would expect for the BMP range. 
Now, the solution here is, again, to calculate the code points uh, for the surrogate halves separately, so you'd have to do that yourself, and then pass those as separate arguments to the function. And that way, it will work the way you would expect it to. But needless to say, again, this is a huge pain to deal with all the time. Another example is, uh, well, the character add and the character code add methods on the string prototype. Let's say if you want to use character add to retrieve the first symbol in the string that only contains the pile of poo character, you wouldn't get the code point, of the, you wouldn't get the character of the, un, of the pile of poo symbol, you would only get the first surrogate half because JavaScript considers that to be a separate character. And similarly, if you use character code add to retrieve the first code point in that string, so the code point of the first symbol in the string, you would only get the code point of the first surrogate half not the code point of the pile of poo character, which is probably what you would expect in this case. And of course, there are many, many more uh, examples of this crappy behavior, like uh, the substring method on the string prototype, the slice method on the string prototype, and also regular expressions are a huge pain to work with whenever you need to support astral characters for this very reason. Simply because each astral symbol is considered to be two separate characters in JavaScript. Now, luckily, uh, we have ECMAScript 6, 6 coming up, and it will introduce some new features that will make it easier to work with astral Unicode symbols in JavaScript. The first thing it will introduce is uh, Unicode code points escapes. And they kind of look similar to the Unicode escapes that we've seen earlier, um, except now there's a backslash followed by a U, followed by braces. And within those braces, you can use up to six hexadecimal digits. So that should be enough to represent all the possible Unicode code points. And by using this type of escape sequence, it means that you can represent any Unicode symbol based on its code point without having to worry about calculating surrogate pairs for astral symbols. So this makes our lives a lot easier. Another addition is the from code point method on string. Um, this is kind of similar like uh, to string dot from character code, except that this one actually works. This one works for any Unicode code point and not just for the code points within the BMP plane within the BMP range. Similarly, there's also code point add on the string prototype. It's similar to the character code add method that we already have right now, except this one actually deals with full symbols rather than with surrogate halves. So in this case, if you were to uh, request the code point at the zeroth position of this string, so the first symbol, the code point of that, you wouldn't get the first surrogate half, no, you would get the code point for the full symbol. So that's actually what you would expect. Then finally, uh, I would like to say a few words about JavaScript variable names, uh, because fun fact, the language grammar for JavaScript variable names is also heavily Unicode based. The um, ECMAScript 5 specification simply defines a number of Unicode categories um, that may be used in variable names in certain positions. So rather than trying to explain all these rules to you, uh, let's just do a, a little quiz here. Which one of these is invalid? And there's only one that is actually invalid. Now, think of your answer and keep it in your minds. Okay, let's just move on to the next slide. Turns out that it's actually the last one that's the only one that is invalid. All the other ones are allowed. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's a zero width non breaking space between the J and the S. Yeah, I know, right? Now, for a detailed explanation of why this is the case, you can always check out the link at the bottom of this slide. Uh, or, for those with a visual memory, here's a handy regular expression to help you remember it. So, here we go. I hope you're taking notes. So, this summarizes all the rules according to ECMAScript 5.1 and Unicode 6.2 uh, for valid variable names. Yeah, okay, we're there. Uh, it's literally over 9,000 characters long. It's about 11,300 something. Yeah. I, actually, I didn't write this out by hand. I wrote a Python script that generated this for me because it would be way too much work otherwise. And I've also made an online tool for that. Um, so you can simply enter any string and it will immediately tell you if it's a valid JavaScript variable name or not. Useful, I know. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, so thank you for your attention.